Hey, this is Ira Wilson with Shimakolo Native Arts, and we're here with the renowned potter Therese Tosoni Prudencio. Today she did a demonstration on cooking, uh, cooking beans in uh, micaceous pottery. So it's such a, a, a really cool thing we learned about pottery today and a little bit about her Pueblo. And, and these are becoming rare and rare because your Pueblo is very small, correct? Yes. Our Pueblo, uh, Picaris Pueblo, is located um, in northern New Mexico. It was um, one of the largest Pueblos at one time. Um, we have our Pueblo pottery, the micaceous pottery. It's the oldest micaceous clay in Northern America, in North America. And our clay, we dated it back to um, the early 900s. Wow. So our pots are world famous, or our Pueblo is world famous for the bean pots. They're a utilitarian um, vessel and they're made for cooking, storing, or serving food. So as you can see with this piece here, um, people, this was full when we came, yeah. but um, <laughs> I made uh, beans and um, that's what was in the pot. Great. And now the rarity of this, there's not a lot of potters out there that are doing this anymore, is there? Not in Pickery's. Right. In Pickery's there was my mom and a couple of um, cousins, uh, but they don't do it on a continuous basis. I've made it a, um, a life commitment to make the pottery on a continuous basis. So I'm trying to keep the pottery alive because that's what our Pueblo is known for. Right, right. But, um, I love doing it. So I was fine when I started um, making the pottery. So the final process is that it is um, hit fire. You hit fire, which is um, warm and in the oven inside, and we'll have the food going outside. And what we do is we, we light a fire, a small fire, to dry the ground. And because if there's any moisture in the ground, that moisture will come up when you fire it, and that can cause the explosion. So once the pots are warmed um, in the oven inside, then we'll take them outside and then we start to pile them on and cover it with um, pine wood. You can use pinyon and cedar. Cedar and pinyon burn hotter. So we have to use pine bark. That burns um, long, it burns low, and it burns slow. So that's what we're going to do. Every once in a while I can add in a little spring of um, cedar and that will cause a little bit change in the coloring, but I can't add too much cedar because then you'll overheat the explode. Talk about the last of the Mohicans. Um, yeah, the Pueblo is really, really shaking down. And the pottery, there's not people there that are wanting to continually make the pottery. So these, these are like the last, my mother, myself, I think I have like one cousin that's doing it. She only does it every once in a while. Um, so I'm teaching my children how to make um, my caches pottery. So I just say, oh Lord, you know, like I hope that they are able to master it. Because gosh, if anything happens to me, because my mom's got arthritis, she's not really able to make it as often anymore. Anything happens to me, I thought, wow, you know, this is, it's a lost art. Mm -hmm. Have you considered getting um, the cultural center has um, been very, very good to me and they recorded a lot of um, history and information on that. Yes. So what he has and I just put um, water in here. It'll hold the water. However, it hasn't been seasoned, and it could cause the pot to crack um, sooner in its life than what I want it to. So what, what the oil does, and all of the seasoning, what it does is it seals everything in here. Because it still is um, clay, still is a, like a ceramic, and it doesn't have the glaze like commercial pots. What that oil does is it creates that water barrier so it doesn't soak into the pot and cause any type of uh, erosion. Christine, yes. where, where can we buy You can buy pots right here. No, that is a good question.
question because I'll tell you this, and the gift shop can verify this. If you go to Pickery's and you do a tour there, and you're going there looking for the Pickery's pottery, you are not going to find a cookie pot in Pickery's. That's how um, scarce they become. So when I, I put on my um, advertisement or my um, writings or anything, that it's a rare pot to find, it is a rare pot to find. And they went to Pickery's and they cannot find the pottery in Pickery's. That's why I say it's going to be very, very sad if anything, God forbid, happens to me um, because I'm, I've worked so hard. I'm in a, I'm in a, in a what do you call it, like a revival to keep the pot alive and to bring it back. I've made my Cassius pottery all my life, and some people will come up and they'll say, well, you know what, your pots are like a little thick. <laughs> you know, I went and I got this pot from artists whoever, and they were so thin and so beautiful, and they were so light, and yours are, you know, like they're thick and they're a little heavy, and I was thinking, and then I always ask him, have you ever seen or felt or held a thin, light slow cooker? <laughs> Them little crock pots are thick. These are durable. They gotta be made for cooking. They gotta be durable. They gotta hold in the heat. They gotta hold in that liquid, that food, things like that. So my pots, they're not gonna be like most of the micaceous um, pots that you might see out there. Those are for decoration. Excuse me, Carl. I got here at one, and you'd already started talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the seasoning part is I will take a. Um, a vessel like this and I will coat it very um, freely with um, olive oil on the outside and the inside of the pottery inside and out then I just leave it to set for a couple of hours maybe three four hours and sometimes I put so much olive oil that it's even it's dripping on the outside, that's fine. I leave it because the clay will continue to soak it in. I'll do that probably about three, four times. And then the last time that I do it, I will just coat the inside with the olive oil. Then I'll put water in it, and then I'll cook something starchy. So potatoes, rice, anything like that, that seals up the rest of the pot. And then um, after that starchy food is cooked, I'll take that out, rinse the pot, wipe it out with, um, I'll, I'll uh, rinse it with hot water, baking soda, if there's any um, food in there, and then um, I'll wipe it with the olive oil again, and then I just, I put it away, that's it. And that's what I do every time that I use the pot. I always wipe it on the inside with the oil, and then I'll put it away, and then before I use it again, I'll wipe it with the oil again because um, while it's setting, while it's resting in between the cooking, whenever, um, it'll always soak in that oil. So and it'll all soak in, it won't get rancid? No, it doesn't get rancid. It just, it just keeps soaking in. So then what temperature do you cook the rice or the whatever in? Um, I cook about probably about like 295 somewhere around there because they're they're slow cookers these are not maybe they're not pressure cookers they cook fast they're slow cookers so I'll put it on a low low heat and I'll just keep checking it throughout the day to see if it needs a little bit water another thing if it needs water um, add lukewarm water do not add cold water if your food needs more water because it will shock it and don't crack However, in the probably like the late 40s, maybe into the 60s, my aunt and my uncle, they started um, adding little, um, well, little designs to the pots. And then that craft was, um, it died because they passed away. So that's one of the things, these are what I call my revival pots or the revival design because this is um, something that was done around that time. So anytime that I see these pots, 
um, I'll say, oh yeah, it's Pickery's Potter, and I know that that was done around that time, and I know exactly who did that, and it was my aunt. So when I go into the museums, I keep going back. Um, I have a 22 year old and I have my um, 11 and um, 13 year old. I mean, how, how well are they doing on your, on your you say you're teaching? Are they still on your interested? Are you doing on your body? Yeah. I can contest as a buyer that her, her son does some killer pottery. <laughs> she's done a really good job with them, and she was telling me that this is the next generation of Victory's pottery. She assures us that it won't go anywhere soon, but he's doing an awesome job. So, round of applause for Teresa. Oh, yeah. When you see my children's work, some people say, they didn't make that. You made that and you put their name on it. No, this is one thing, because I homeschooled for a long time. A child can do a fantastic job as long as they're taught step by step by step. It takes a long time, but they can do that job. My daughter can make a pot like this as long as I sit there and teach her step I say, okay, now we're going to sand it this way, now we're going to bump it this way. It takes a long time, but, you know, that's how they learn, but that's at, about the caliber, about where they're at. Then I'll want to uh, smooth it on the outside. And this is something that the old pots that we have, um, they're rough on the outside because they weren't made for pretty and stuff. They were actually made to be used. So, um, but when I smooth them on the outside, I'll use a sandstone, and then it smooths it, and then to um, make it even smoother to cover up any holes or anything like that, I'll use the, um, the sheep's wool. And I love to use the sheep's wool because it's um, got the natural lanolin, and that helps to um, make it really shiny. Yeah. For my grandparents. <laughs> she knows yeah. somebody. Yeah, you won't find. I don't know. I haven't ever seen oh, this. The, the wool. It's the real wool. Yeah, it's the real wool. You don't have to use it with the skin on. I've made it a, um, a life commitment to make the pottery on a continuous basis. So I'm trying to keep the pottery alive because that's what our Pueblo is known for. Right, right. So ladies and gentlemen out there, please, we can't stress enough how rare this art form is from Picturese. So if you do get a chance to get your hands on a bean pot, we suggest you do. Um, thank you very much. I'm Ira Wilson again with Shumakolo Native Arts. Love, peace, and mutton grease. Catch you later.